It should go without saying that choosing the right investment can be challenging. For time-strapped everyday investors, combing through the financial records of individual companies to find a share worth buying can seem like a monumental task. Instead, many people prefer to put their money into investment funds run by professional asset managers who do have the time and expertise to find the best companies on the market. These funds usually invest in dozens or even hundreds of shares, meaning that the investors benefit from diversification, with their money spread around lots of companies, rather than putting all their eggs into one basket. However, the problem with this approach is that there are thousands of funds on the market, each themed around different geographic areas, market sectors, asset types, or investment strategies. Choosing the right investment fund still requires a great deal of time and research. This is where best buy lists come in. Investment platforms like Fidelity, AJ Bell, and Hargreaves Lansdowne compile lists of the best performing funds in different sectors to help investors choose where to place their money. In its recent investigation, the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, found that investors who used Best Buy lists, on average, paid less for their funds and benefited from better performance, improving people's outcomes, says Danny Cox, head of communications at Hargreaves Lansdowne. There is an eye-watering choice of around 3,000 funds, and without Best Buy lists, the risk is that people are paralyzed by choice. Our client research has confirmed that people need help choosing funds. As a way to inform and educate investors, Best Buy lists are a good idea, at least, in theory. In practice, the lists have started to attract more complaints and much greater scrutiny over the last year both from the market and from regulators. Common criticisms of Best Buy lists include questions of transparency regarding how and why some funds are chosen over others, the appropriateness of certain funds being recommended to retail investors, and the inclusion of underperforming funds. Some critics even claim that Best Buy lists are constructed based on choosing funds that are most profitable for the platform, and not because they perform well for investors. The issue came to a head last year with a scandal around the Woodford Equity Income Fund. After a long period of poor performance, a spike in redemptions forced the fund to suspend trading last June. Neil Woodford was subsequently fired as the fund's manager, and in October it was announced that the fund would be liquidated. Yet despite the fund's catastrophic underperformance in the months leading up to its suspension, it was still included in Hargreaves Lansdowne's Best Buy list, known as the Wealth 50. The platform defended the fund's inclusion, citing multiple meetings with Wood for more on this story. Visit the news article link.